All right, so I have a new stove. Very interesting, very different, the Encamp wood stove. If you're interested in hearing more about this stove, stay tuned. So on first inspection, the first thing you're going to notice is that this stove is probably unlike anything you've seen before, certainly unlike anything I've seen before. I know the first time I looked at this, my initial thought was, this is way too big for what it needs to be. That the, you know, the platform is too big for the, what the size of the burn chamber is. But when I spoke to the engineers over at NCAMP, I have a better understanding of why they designed it the way it is. So it is fairly compact as you can see, but it's designed this way primarily for stability. So it has two fold-out legs and a fold-out or drop-down burn chamber, which is actually quite deep. I'm going to give you some close-ups in a second, but primarily you have a very, very stable platform that is raised off of the ground by a couple of inches so that there is no contact with the earth, very little chance of the moisture affecting the burn, very little chance of any of the ash dropping down and causing any unintentional fires. The platform also on top also allows for stability in that you can actually take your, say, your pot off of the burner if you want to, to feed more sticks into the burn chamber or lay utensils, I guess, on top of the platform. But rather than just show you this stove, why don't we just set it up for an initial burn? Okay, I thought what I would do is just give you a couple of close-ups of the stove before I set it up and have a little fire in it. And you can see that I've already had a couple of fires on it, and that blackening on top I think is unique to the design of the stove, and I'll explain more about that in a minute. But we'll turn it over, and once again it has two legs that fold down to create a table effect. Now, the legs, the platform, that's all aluminum. However, the burn chamber is stainless steel. So you can see up close now the burn chamber, there are the amount of airflow holes through the bottom, and you can see that there is triangular ones around the base. And I asked the designer about that, and that was done intentionally for a couple of reasons, maximize the airflow. And if you look down inside, actually probably easier to see from the bottom, there is grating here as well, but the holes are relatively small. Now, all, to, all told, all added up, there's quite a bit of airflow there, but it's intended to be small enough that you don't get live coals or live embers dropping through onto the ground. So there should be minimal ash buildup inside of this, but still maximum airflow between the bottom and the holes along the sides. But if you look right in the center, you're going to see a hexagon shape. Now let me turn it inside out. I'll have to collapse the burn chamber for you to see this. But if you look inside that hexagon shape, that's intended for solid fuels like hexamine or esbit tablets. Now, one more thing to notice before we set it up are the pot standoffs. They run about a quarter inch. I know my initial impression was that's not going to be enough. There's no way that that's going to vent enough air for the uh, you know, proper burn in the chamber. And unfortunately, I was correct. Now, I spoke to the, the engineer about this, and he acknowledged that, that this can be a bit of an issue with the stove. They tried a number of designs, and the reason they went with the lower pot stands was to slow the burn down. Because when you'll see, once the fire gets going in this, this thing is just a little volcano. It is just a torch with fire coming up through, almost like a rocket stove. That con conical shape from bottom to top actually concentrates and forces the flames upwards so that you get a very intense flame coming out of that relatively small hole on top. Now one thing I'll do today and I've done when I tested it before is I'm going to use a set of cross stands. First I'll do, I'll show you without the cross stands and with the cross stands. So the engineer again told me that there are times when he, when he, I was correct, the, the pot would dampen the flames down, but also there was times when it was just the right standoff for the type of wood and the type of fire that it was using. Possibly if you wanted to have the fire slow down so you could simmer or at least slow the burn, that's where this pot stand, this lowered pot stand will come in. But let's set it up and have a fire in it and demonstrate it that way. Okay, so I have the stove set up in an old fire pit. I just cleaned the fire pit out. And the reason I'm using the fire pit today is a couple of reasons. The wood, the ground is certainly plenty wet. I'm not concerned about fires today. We've had a lot of rain. It's very cold and damp here, so that's not the reason. But it's also very windy. So this fire pit affords me a good bit of protection from the wind. So that's the reason why I'm using it. So you can see that I've used the stove a couple of times, but not extensively. 
So what, I'm still experimenting, learning how best to use the stove. So for this demonstration, I'm going to do a bottom up burn and I'm going to be using as much natural materials as I can for that. So I have some birch bark off a dead birch tree. I'm going to dump a little bit inside right now. I have a little bit more right here that are light and I have a number of small sticks. Now, one of the things I've noticed already about this stove is that the burn chamber, in addition to being quite small across the top, and by the way, I haven't mentioned this yet, but I will provide all the dimensions. The dimensions of the top plate, the dimensions of the exit hole, as well as the depth and dimensions of the burn chamber, and the height that it sits off the ground. I think that may be of interest to you. But for demonstration purposes, for this first initial preview, uh, I think just to show you this in action should be sufficient. So, oh, it's windy. So, I am getting my birch bark lit, but it is blowing out almost as quickly. Now let's see if I can get this over there without losing it. Alright, so I have a little bit of birch bark lit up and dropped down inside. Now right away start dropping some sticks in. Not a big burn chamber as I mentioned. Those are probably too big to start with. But let's get some smaller stuff in there. So it's kind of interesting that the burn chamber tapers upwards and as I said, the engineers do that intentionally to kind of uh, concentrate the flames. But it also allows me to put sticks in at different angles so that they are crisscrossing a little bit in the center here. I didn't put much brick brick in there. Let's just see if these sticks were dry enough to get a fire going. Give it a couple of seconds here. And right away you can see that the chamber is not very deep, but you know, it's at least as deep as my solo stove, the small, the smaller one. I don't think it's quite as deep as either the Luxata wood gas stove or the larger solo stove, but it's still quite deep. Just an initial thought is that the burn chamber is approximately the same size as a Nimberlet stove, and I don't know if that helps anybody with comparisons, but it might give you an idea that th this will hold a fair amount of wood, even though it all has to be loaded in from the top. So you can still see how windy it is, even in the protection of these rocks here. I think we'll just let it run in real time for a minute to see how quickly it does catch on. Obviously I have to wait for some of those sticks to go down below the surface before I can put my pot on. It is catching. It is no speed demon today. But uh, it is catching. Those sticks were a soft wood. They're not a hardwood stick. Are we still burning down there? We are. Just slowly. I've got a couple more small ones I can add to that. And we can start to see some flames coming up now. So while we're waiting for the stove to really take off here, I think it's important that I point out that this stove was provided to me by NCAMP for testing. I did not pay for this stove. This was a review product sent out to me. Uh, slowing down a little bit. I think I may have started off with some sticks that were too big for the amount of birch bark I put in. No, it's still burning. Just slowly. Oh yeah, now there's some flame coming out of it. And again, this is not a review of the stove. I haven't had a long enough to give it a long-term review. I have had a couple of fires in it, but they were under more ideal conditions with wood that I knew to be good and likely to give me success in a burn. So today I'm out in the woods in a cold, late October day after some rain. This is the kind of day you want to know your stove is going to work for you. So. This is the day I chose to come out and give you an idea of what the stove is going to work like. So here's a thought. I'm wondering by adding more sticks into it as it's lighting up, if I am not starting to close off the top of it a little bit and maybe choking it a little bit. That's an interesting thought. 
I don't know if you can see the flames coming out of this because the wind blowing them around, but it is starting to be intense. It's, I can hear the flames roaring up. Yeah, it's starting to take off now. As soon as it gets a little bit more better established and some of these larger ones drop down inside, I will put a pot on to show you the effect it has on the fire. Now, I will tell you this from the couple of fires that I've had in it already, this will consume sticks fast. Have yourself a good pile of sticks and if it's just sticks from the woods, make sure that they're all broken down to size and that they're ready to be fed because once the uh, once it starts burning the sticks, and you can see the flames now are really taken off, it will go through them very quickly. And I can understand now why the engineers wanted to slow it down a little bit. That burn chamber is super efficient. And as soon as I can get those down below the surface, I'll drop the pot on. I just want you to see the efficiency of this thing. Yeah, that's a rather big stick, isn't it? Yeah, it's almost down. And that's what I meant about having smaller sticks to put in because uh, the standoffs being as short as they are pretty much mean that you're going to be restricted to shorter sticks. Now, I do have a set of crossbars. I think I mentioned that, that I will put on this in a few minutes just to give you another way of using it. But this is a good start. Oh, will my pot go on now or not? No, not quite. But there is a lot of flame coming out of that. Okay, let's see. I'll check one more time to see if I can't get that stick that was too large to... There we go. That dropped down below now. Perfect. Now I can give an indication of what happens when you put a pot on. So I've got two cups of water in this. It's not a burn test or a boil test. I'm just uh, going to be preparing some coffee and lunch. Okay. You're seeing what I saw for the first couple times as well. The moment I put the pot on, it immediately dampened the fire down. And you can tell by the amount of smoke that's coming out from underneath. Now the fire is still going with a lot of force underneath, but it's dampened down significantly. And that's why there's so much resin on top of the stove. I'm not quite sure what to think about this. Now maybe if I had I used hardwood instead of softwood, I might have gotten a different, a different result. But uh, this is my, my concern with the stove. But in a second I'll set it up with the crossbars and I'll show you what happens then. Let's take it off and see. Yeah, see the flame is still there. So maybe I'm being concerned about something that's uh, really not a concern at all, except for the smokiness of it. Because it's still burning under there. There's still a lot of flame. And this will slow the burn down. Now let's take it off again and have a look. Yeah, you can see the flame is there. All right, I'm going to cut away for a minute so I can get my crossbars. And we'll get those set up on top of the stove. And I'll show you what it works like with the crossbars on. Okay, I've added a set of crossbars. Now the crossbars I'm using are about an inch and a quarter tall. They are titanium crossbars from another small stove that I'm testing out. I'll show you under a separate video. But I think they're sufficient to give you an idea now that uh, better pot height or better standoff here. Let's put that back on. So now there's no real dampening. There's a little bit of smoke happening now, but there's no real dampening. You can see the flames are coming up the sides of the pot. That's the type of ventilation you want on a small wood stove. And uh, it's going to work much better now. It is subject to wind a little bit more. As you can see, the wind, as gentle as it is at this moment, is still pushing the flames around. But it's working much more efficient. All right, since I turned the camera off a moment ago before turning it back on, I had to almost completely refill the burn chamber. So it gives you an idea just how hot and how fast this will burn. Now, as I said, I am using softwood, so it's going to go through quickly. So I do have, actually I'm kind of running out of pieces here. Get a few more ready to go. Uh, let's just see if I can't show you. Now, here is something that's both good and bad. I do have to take the pot off to feed the stove. Ah, maybe. Let's see. Well, I guess I can get a couple in 
underneath there with a good sized putz and off. And it also means I can put in slightly larger sticks now. Not quite as restricted as I was without a with the uh, larger pot stand on. Uh, it's not the end of the world to have to do this, you know, but it's it's not what I would prefer to do, which is taking the pot off to put wood in a stove. I like the idea of being able to feed the stove from the side or through some type of an opening on the top. So that's working, though. Okay, I thought I'd uh, just give you a little update here. I decided to cook myself some lunch with the water that I had put on to boil. So my soup is uh, come to a, well cooked now, and I'm just letting it cool off a little bit. And I wanted to put some water back on for some uh, coffee. So instead of putting in more of those little dried pieces of softwood, I cut a piece of dried maple, old maple. I wouldn't say dry. It's it's mostly dry, but it's uh, at least it's a dry hardwood. And I cut them into little four-inch pieces, well, closer to five inches, I guess. They drop down just inside nicely. Look at the difference the fuel can make in the flame. So it's a longer-lasting flame. It appears to be a hotter flame. And, uh, yeah, that's, a, that's what I was looking for. So if I can make a recommendation, if you have the choice, find, maybe start your fire with the softwood because it will ignite fast and catch on fast. But once you get your flames and some coals established in the bottom, Cut yourself some hardwood if you can get it and put that in. Now I'm going to let this go for a minute or two and then I'm going to take the, uh, get some smaller piece here, take the crossbars off because I want to see what difference that makes as well with the hardwood. Actually let's see if we can get it off now without losing my crossbars. Oh. Pick the wrong one. All right, so the crossbars are off, and you can see there's a nicely well-established flame. Let's put the pot back on and see what happens. Ah, okay. Same basic disappointment that I had before. It does tend to not smother, well, almost, but certainly dampen the flames down and create a lot of smoke. As you can see, the flame is still there. The fire is still burning. But it does create a lot more smoke that way because you dampen it down so much. Now with the hardwood, it may not get the same effect that I was getting with the softwood, which is all that resin all over the top of the stove and all over the bottom of the pot. You do get that with softwoods. You get it less with hardwoods, but you're still going to get soot. And a smoky fire is a sootier fire, less efficient fire. But let's see, is the flame still there? Yeah. I mean, it's still burning well. Underneath there, it's just the smoke. That's interesting. Yeah, the flame is still burning well underneath the pot. So the engineers were correct in their assessment that it doesn't smother the fire, but it certainly slows the burn down. So that's a, that's a plus, but there are times when I want a much hotter, faster burn, especially if all I'm looking to do is bring a pot of water to a boil and my wood is not perfectly dry hardwood. I want to have maximum airflow through the bottom and through the top to get as much air going through that wood as possible. So I am going to reassemble my pot stand, titanium pot stand here, put it back on, bring my water to a boil so I can have some coffee. That's the nice thing about titanium. I knocked that off the fire a second ago, but it's cooled off already. Well, that looks pretty good. I think I can get two more pieces down in there. And I'll have my coffee. And at that point, it should be time to wrap this video up. Okay, I was just uh, coming over to put my stove away, and I thought this might be worth having a look at as well. So the stove has all but completely burned out. There's still a little bit of coals down on the bottom. But I want you to see now, I haven't shaken it just like I did. This may not add to the accuracy of it, but very little ash fell out of the bottom. Some of it just because I shook it now, but certainly no live coals. And as I shake the stove, I'm just going to put what's left of the little coals there. And that's all there is, is just that little bit of coal left. And then I suspect that I left the stove for any length of time, it would have gone out as well. So that does speak to the efficiency of the burn chamber as well.
All right, let's wrap this video up. Okay, just before I give you some closing comments, I thought I'd show you the stove after it has been used. So there we are. It is quite resinous or tarry on top. And that's because of how the short pot stands do dampen down the flame considerably. Other than that, let's put it away. Collapse the burn chamber down. The two legs, one will go down first before the other. Now I did make a little stuff sack for it, but uh, that's how the stove came. So it is pretty compact. And as I mentioned, I'm gonna put all the dimensions and the weight and everything else in the show notes below. So you'll have some reference. Okay, how about some final comments? Well, let's just be clear that once again, this was an initial review, or not even a review, a preview of this stove. I've only had it for a little while now. I've only had half a dozen fires in it. I have started to form some thoughts on it, but I don't think I've had it long enough to give you a final set of comments on it. What I can say about it so far is, the size of it, or at least the dimensions of it, provide for a very, very stable stove. I have no worries that I'm actually gonna tip this stove over. It'll work on just about any surface. I don't have to worry about the cold underneath of it because it's high enough off the ground. I would think though, if I was gonna be using it during the winter, and I will, that I would have to clear the snow down to at least frozen ground. Otherwise, it's just gonna to start to sink down slowly with the weight as well as the heat. It's fairly compact, and I'll give you the dimensions again, as I said. It's fairly lightweight. It is definitely lighter, th lighter than the firebox stove, uh, even though dimensionally it's a little larger. So what can I say that I like about it at this point? I like the stability. I like the intensity of the burn that happens inside that chamber. I like how quickly the fire does light up and start to create a good burn inside of it. What I'm not too, too convinced I like about it so far though is the low pot stand specifically. Yes, at a quarter wrench, they are, it's still working. As you saw, I put the pot on, take it off. The flame was still there, so it didn't put the fire out, but it did dampen it down and create an awful lot of smoke. Consider that for yourself. Is that a plus or a minus? Personally, I don't like all that smoke that it creates, as well as the resinous sooty uh, tar on the bottom of my pot and on the stove. By lifting the pot off though, it made it a much more efficient stove. So this is something I have been in contact with the manufacturer and the designers, the engineers on, and uh, I know that they want to take another look at this. Something else I haven't mentioned yet. The diameter of the burn chamber at the top is just slightly too small to allow a Trangia alcohol stove to drop in. Had that been just that slight bit larger, allowing a Trangia to drop in, this would have been more of a dual purpose stove. As it is, it's dual purpose in the sense that it's a wood stove, plus when it's in this configuration, it can be used with the hexamine or resbit tablets, and it's got a nice, nice uh, amount of air coming in the bottom and in just the right height. But I think with an alcohol stove, it would have made it just that much more versatile. Hopefully that's something that they'll put into a future design. All right, not a final set of comments. I do have to give this more time. But I thought it would give you a, at least an initial look of what it is I'm playing with these days. All right, that's all I have for this, vid this video. Uh, it's a cold, late, windy October day. And I'm getting ready to pack up and head back. But it's been a good day. So all I can ask of you is the same thing I ask myself. Get out and explore. Take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.